The Own Your Intuitive podcast is for the creatives, spiritual entrepreneurs, and light workers in the world. The shining ones who have been told to dim their light and stop believing in magic. I say screw that. The time to rise is now. To bring your gifts out into the world in a big way. Creating a business that feeds your soul and your bank account. You are a magical being with the potential to change the world, one human at a time. The time for you to own your intuitive is now. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be back talking about the chakras, talking about misalignment and alignment and how COVID-19 COVID is is really causing a ruckus in our energetic bodies, which is in turn a total gift. Just saying, because what we have available to us now is the awareness of what was already there. Um, The coronavirus is really shining a light on things that maybe we would never have had a light shone on or that we were, you know, existing in a subconscious loop. And now it's being dredged up from the, you know, depths of our inner beings to say like, hey, did you know this was happening in your energetic body? Because I would really like it if you would clear this up for me so that I can be in a higher vibrational state of alignment and service to my soul clients right now. It's a big deal. I think it's kind of cool. Um, because this is the work that I do. I always say as, you know, empaths, as light workers, as healers, as coaches, as authors, as those who are in the transformational space, we do our internal work like it's our job. Just saying. So which brings me, it's kind of like a nice lead in to the solar plexus. (laughs) I made that feel really ominous, but it's kind of a powerhouse of the chakra system. Because whether we realize it or not, the solar plexus is your belief system. It is how you feel you are deserving and worthy of all the magical things that the universe is trying to offer you right now here in this moment. And so from the time we're born until the present day listening to this podcast, you have been in a state, I have been in a state, we've all been in a state of receiving information and defining our belief systems on it. Now, if we were to talk about brain science, um, from the time of one to six, we basically have ourselves figured out. We create our patterns, how we see the world, how we interact with the world is formulated in that time. And by the time we're 35, it's pretty much an automatic set cycle of experience over and over and over again. And so these beliefs that we carry could be that, you know, other people can do this and I can't, I don't have the education, I don't have a good voice to sing, whatever it is that we may be picked up on throughout our our life. And it really comes down to witnessing our parents experiencing it. Not only did we witness our parents experiencing things and adjusting our beliefs to that, we maybe heard our parents speak about different people or the way they spoke about people and that helped form and forge our belief system as well as, you know, uh, any teachers, any exes, any people that we held, uh, you know, or cherished grandparents, aunts, uncles, friends who along the lines started to say things to us. And we were like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not good at, at these sports, so I shouldn't follow through with them, or I'm not a good singer. I should never be able to create a business or, you know, we had these dreams and these beliefs and of what we wanted to do when we were young. And we were told, you know, you can't make a living doing that or, you know, that's a, that's a hobby. That's not a job. And so we shifted everything in our lives to support the beliefs and the programming and the patterning of our childhood, what we were told, not what we really want to be or what we want to vibrate as. And so this becomes what I call the junk drawer of the energetic body, the solar plexus, because we just basically take anything anyone says about us. And if we don't want to feel it and we don't want to deal with it and we don't want to like see it through to the end, we just like a carpet lifted up, dust in what people are saying about us, throw the carpet down and be like, I'll get to that later. I don't need to do this right now. And um, it can become the subconscious program, the loop that we are experiencing, our past patterning, our you know, predictable future, as Joe Dispenza would say, and we just live in this consistent, 
you know, experience over and over again, day in, day out, day in, day out. I'm not worthy of chain, like quitting my job. I'm not deserving of making $20,000 a month, whatever it is that that belief cycle then goes into existence. But here's the deal. Um, the problem with this is that COVID-19 and coronavirus is shifted everything that we know as our current reality, period, exclamation mark. And so the jobs that we were just going to on autopilot, maybe they don't exist anymore, right? And then the way that we show up in our social interactions have shifted. So our beliefs that we are the party animal or the silly one or the one that people come to to share their personal problems and we like keep the whole, you know, I think of like the corporate, if you work in corporate or you work in a job and you're like the person that feels that they keep everything together and running smoothly, like everything else is the belief system of ourselves has kind of been shifted. And we're left now with turning a mirror and going like, Ooh, what do I, what do I really believe? And what do I want to hold on to as my beliefs? And what do I no longer want to carry? And so two things happen when we get to what I consider the perimeter of your solar plexus. So what your current belief system is about yourself, where you feel deserving, worthy, seen, and heard. And if you were to expand out, there's like an alarm system that goes off, right? Of all your previous experiences, it's like being at an interrogation table when you expand out to new beliefs and you get to this perimeter and then your your subconscious mind is, yeah, but you know, look at this, look at this. And it starts like an interrogation. Do you remember this? Do you remember that? This is clearly why we believe what we do. Like, can you not see the history here? Like clearly you are not participating in this conversation well because these are, this is proof of why. Why you haven't done it before and why you can't do it now. So you should probably leave this idea alone and come back into just being the way that things have been. But what if nothing is the way that it used to be? What now? What now? So I'm going to tell you the resistances of the solar plexus because I really want you to hear them from a new lens, from looking at this from a new space, because nothing that we've had in the old paradigm can move forward into this new paradigm. No structures, no, um, you know, interactions, no uh, way that we do business, that we run our lives. Everything is getting like a reset button, including your solar plexus. Stop it. This is so exciting. So I want to bring forth the two resistances so that you can shine a light into when they're manifesting in your life right now with the new, with the new ways that you want to step forward or these new plans or new ideas or new opportunities that may present themselves to you in this space, in this awareness. So solar plexus is defined by perfectionism. So, you know, I remember watching Firestarter sessions by Danielle Laporte. It was like a YouTube video. And she said, perfectionism is procrastination. Because when we are not worthy and not deserving, it means we feel we're not good enough. So nothing that we are putting out is good enough. So you'll start a lot of projects and not finish them because you'll feel like they're not, they have to be perfect. Warning, that's not true. Um, done is better than perfect. Everything, clarity comes with movement. There's like a lot of like Tamara-isms I could be throwing down at the table. But because we don't know what's going to be happening moving forward, perfectionism doesn't have any ground anymore because we don't have a certain way things are supposed to look. They don't have a way that things are supposed to be right now. So there's like this freedom in perfectionism because nothing is perfect anymore. Nobody has perfect hair, perfect nails. And I say this in every podcast because it's so beautiful to me, like the humanity that like we're so human right now. I love it so much. Um, so because perfectionism is so, like everything is gone, we can, there's no way perfectionism can hold space. Um, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity right now, but I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, And the other one is imposter syndrome. That's another way in which you'll know that the solar plexus is out of alignment is when it's like, I, no one's gonna read my post, nobody's gonna pick up my book, nobody's going to listen to my music, nobody, like, I'm not good enough, I'm not, you know, worthy enough, I'm not the one that somebody needs in order to solve this problem. So it presents as imposter syndrome. Now, the neat thing here is that every single human in the planet right now probably has imposter syndrome in some form or way based on what's happening in the world. So it's like, hey, we all have imposter syndrome anyway, just a heads up. Like, I bet you 
even Oprah gets imposter syndrome. Now, don't quote me on that because I can't guarantee that. Um, But I know Will Smith has talked about it, (laughs) so I can use him in this podcast. But it's just something we feel like whenever we expand beyond what we know, we do feel a little bit like an imposter. Like, I remember writing my first book and going like, ah, it took me months to say I was an author because I would be like, oh, what do you do? And I'd be like, oh, I'm a life coach. And my husband would be like, and an author. And I'm like, yeah, that too. Right. (laughs) Like I felt like an imposter, even though I'd actually written a book. So strange. But because we're all in the same container like I feel like all races classes things like that have been removed we're all suffering in the same way right now and I use the word suffering lightly because again we don't need to choose to be suffering right now and so this imposter syndrome again doesn't have the same level of ownership or stability as it used to because again when when nothing is stable and nothing is like set in stone anymore. And there's so much unknown already existing. So we don't even have to tr- create the unknown. We're just in uncertainty. We are in unknown. Everything feels new. The imposter syndrome is universal right now. So it's like, ooh, if everybody is feeling the same way, then I have the opportunity to lean in to, to shift my beliefs right now in this space in this time and step forward in these new ways by forging new beliefs and new patterns and new programming because it is this time this new awareness this opportunity that we are all going through Mm. Mm -mm -mm. i always think of like the solar plexus as you know going into a cave and if you imagine the cave walls being like a whiteboard and over the time people have gone in and written their beliefs of how you should be or what you should do and all that in this whiteboard in this cave over your entire life and now is the opportunity with everything being pulled out from underneath us and all of the things that we've identified as going into the cave with a whiteboard eraser and being like mm, no, 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 no. I, I think that was my dad's and I'm going to just erase it because I don't believe that anymore. I don't want that to be how I step forward from this experience. Ooh, look at that one. That one came from, oh, Billy in grade two when he said this about me. Let's erase that. And then like going forward and just really taking the time. Because to me, the solar plexus, if you're clearing out a junk drawer in real life, you do, you you pick things up and you're like these birthday candles. Now I haven't used birthday candles in like four years, but will I ever need birthday candles again? I probably, you know, this is something that I do wanna keep. I do like birthday candles in the house. Um, but then you might pick up a safety pin and be like, oh my God, this, I don't even know. I have like a whole container of sa- I can trash this safety pin, it's not needed any longer. And, and so you could have that same opportunity with your beliefs. And now is a beautiful time where we're in this space and we have the time to to really get to our internal landscape in a whole different way to lean in and do this work and clear out your own solar plexus and know that everybody is being faced with the mirror right now in the same way. And so perfectionism and imposter syndrome does not have the same control or clenching, grasping, gripping that it always has because it can't because we are across the board universally going through this as a collective so utilize utilize this time to massage yourself into new expanded ways of being and believing super fun super fun so that's a little bit about your solar plexus it is the deserving and worthy you are enough uh, sensation and feeling And I'm excited. I'm excited to hear how this podcast has landed for you. So please email me at Tamara at TamaraArnold.ca and let me know your thoughts. And again, please join the Facebook group Rebel Unicorns to be in a collective uh, container of conscious creators, of lightworkers, healers, healers, empaths, and other spiritual entrepreneurs as we forge forward in a new way for this new way that the world is is working and being experienced. Don't forget to answer those two questions when you're coming in. Um, It's important. It lets me know that you are excited to be there and actively want to be a part of the group, even if you're silent. Those two questions just means... I'm in it, Tamara. I want to be a part of something that everybody has come into and said, I'm raising my hand and saying yes to. So again, I look forward to hearing from you. 
please join the group. The link will be in the show notes and we will connect next week for Heart Chakra.